Hello, I'm Angela Shaw. I'm the editor of Exconomy, and I'm here with Cindy Walker Peach at the Austin Technology Incubator. We're going to talk about innovation, about a growing ecosystem in biotech here in, in Austin, Texas. Cindy, let's start. Tell us about ATI, kind of what you do right now, and what the work that you're doing to build the ecosystem here. Okay, sure. Um, ATI is the Austin Technology Incubator. We are a part of the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, ATI has a rich 25-year history of kind of mentoring and building uh, startups, that some of, of which originate from the University of Texas at Austin IP and others, intellectual property, and others actually come up just from the, um, the, from the community. So ATI has been around for quite a long time, but they've never really focused on life sciences until fairly recently. About five years ago, um, we started a, a vertical within ATI that focused in, in life sciences. And by life sciences, it's kind of the big bucket of life sciences. Pharmaceutical Technology. products, uh, medical devices, diagnostics, tools, companies, as well as a very important aspect, delivery, right? Delivery of sure. care, very important element. Um, ATI. Um, in the la it, la ATI Biosciences in the last five years has helped over a dozen companies at this point, raise over um, $80 million Who so would you far. say is your big standout so far, whether just generally or, or in life sciences? Um, I would say, in, and I'll, I'll probably couch all of my comments around life sciences, that's what I like best. <laughs> Um, at ATI, we've had a number of, um, of wins, I would say. Um, Zeers Pharmaceuticals, which is a company in, in the diabetic space. Uh, Savara Pharmaceutical. These are all pharmaceutical companies so far. Right, and those are harder to do. I mean, they're, they're, they're much lo longer lead time for therapies and absolutely, drugs. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, so the two big exits that we've had so far from the portfolio are Zeers Pharmaceuticals and, and Savara Pharmaceuticals. So how, okay, so let's talk about Dell Medical School coming online. Sure. How is having the medical school going to really help leverage what you're doing, what so many others are doing here, and to create kind of a standout ecosystem that Texas doesn't quite have yet, but, right. you know, possibly soon? Right, right. So there's been a lot of discussion about the third coast, right, turning Texas into this third coast, exactly. uh, away from the east and the west coast, where there really are the big hubs for life sciences. Um, I would say the Dell Medical School is going to be a, 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 a pivotal piece in the whole puzzle that is the ecosystem. Our ecosystem, it's, it's, um, it's robust, but it's, it's fairly small. It's high quality, but it's still very nascent and very small. Um, but where, it is growing. Where are the growing. big things that, that, you know, these companies, when you talk to CEOs or professors who have a great idea, they want to commercialize, what is, you know, what are the things they say, Cindy, this is what I need, this is the help that I need. And how do you feel like the school is going to help you do that better, right. you know, help them do that better? Right, right. What are those issues? So there's always, um, there are many elements to starting companies, right? There's the intellectual property, which is usually created in an academic institution or, or a medical academic institution. And um, then there's their leadership issues, which are, you know, you need to have the right team take a company, uh, take the intellectual property and turn it into something that, that is uh, a company. But the company really needs to revolve around being fundable. And so that means crafting the right story, having the right business model in order to make a fundable company. And that's actually, that's what we do, that's our stock and trade at ATI right. is actually crafting those and preparing those companies for capital investment. Um, the thing that the Dell Medical School is going to bring is going to be a lot of collaboration. The th um, I would say the academic piece is at uh, UT, it's a tier one academic university right now. Lots of fabulous science that's ongoing, lots of very big innovators. Um, but the piece that is missing, and perhaps, uh, and I think the Dell Medical School, Medical School will deliver on this, is kind of the, the clinical, the, the, um, the health kind of um, how does this thing going to get implemented into this new economy, this new healthcare delivery system, mm -hmm. or this new way of treating? So many things get invented. There's lots of great widgets. There's lots of great ideas. There's lots of great ideas, but getting them from here to Correct. the market—that's where you know—that's where that's the rubber exactly meets right. the road, right? And so having that physician and patient involvement is going to be a critical element. We have companies that have been quite successful at doing that, but it means also going outside of the Austin area. So they interact with other physicians and, and healthcare institutions that are in San Antonio or Houston or Dallas or even on the East and West Coast and be fabulous to be able to bring that here in, into Austin. Well, we were discussing earlier, I mean, the one thing that UT does have is, you know, there's Austin, 
here and the Dell School is coming online, but yep. UT's got medical schools at Houston, has medical school in Dallas. That's right. And you can really use, I mean, you've got lots of great knowledge in all of those places. That's right. And help use the Austin campus as kind of a way to bring everyone in, but you don't have to just work with Austin. You can work with, you can have collaborations with the hospitals in Houston, up at UT South Southwestern. Absolutely. I mean, is that, do you see that really coming together, sort of a, a, the, the minds are coming together to say, let's really take all of these unique assets and make them what they could be? Sure. I mean, if you want to talk at a kind of a more global Texas, you know, kind of view, Texas has every asset that's, that's necessary to create quality companies here in Texas. What's missing is kind of the connection between all of them. We have great manufacturing facilities, we've got great innovation and IP collection, we've got great, great, great hospital groups. What's kind of missing is they're all kind of working in silos in Texas. I'm talking about in Texas. Um, I think that um, the Dell Medical School and their kind of their plan, this kind of here's our blank slate we're going to create from the bottom up, means that those collaborations are going to be incredibly important. And that means collaborating with everybody, not just in the state of Texas, but outside of the state of Texas as well. And you can kind um, of lead the way. I mean, there's absolutely. no pressure, Clay. No pressure, okay? <laughs> um, there's a, a lot of interesting things going on. Well, and it's, it struck me, you know, TMC, they're doing their thing, right. Dell's coming online. Just in the last year, I've seen so much activity and momentum in life sciences. You've got, you've got life sciences here at South by Southwest for the Correct. first time. Yay. Quite pop. Yeah, it's trending. You look at Twitter and there's a lot of things going on. So. Right. I, I, get, I get the sense, you know, for myself that there will be a lot more Absolutely. to write about. There's a lot of people coming in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people, they know Boston, they know San Diego as biotech hubs. And part of it is just getting the word out, I think. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, do you feel like, you know, just getting the VCs to say, hey, there's stuff going on here, you need to come Absolutely. check it out. So the VC, my VC colleagues often say, you know, we're kind of a flyover, you know, Texas yeah, yeah. kind of a fly, the, middle, <laughs> the whole middle part of the country, really. You know, they just kind of fly back and forth between the two West Coast. Well, they've started to become, their interest is peaked in what's happening, I think very specifically in Texas and really very specifically in Austin, frankly. Sure. And we have a number of limited partners, LPs, that are actually here in Austin now. We have regular visits because we do have a number of companies now that are here in life sciences and they have board meetings. And so those VCs that they've invested in those companies actually show up here in Austin now. Mm -hmm. And they've started to recognize that it's not just, you know, it's just not football it's not anymore. Just <laughs> And it may not just be apps, exactly. And there's some real bona fide uh, you know, drug development that's happening here. There's lots of diagnostics. You know, our mid-tier companies are diagnostic companies in Austin. And there's some really great med device that's happening here, too. So we're not the flyover state that we were, say, 20 years ago when I came here as a startup. Um, and I think that's the momentum is going to carry on. It's very specifically because of the medical school. The medical school's involvement. I mean, seriously, I think the medical school is really de facto going to be the center of the, the cluster. We, we're not clustered right now. I think we will be in the future, and I think the medical school is going to be a pivotal part of that. Great. Do we have time for questions, or are we? No. Nope. Well. What is on your wish list for, let's, let's talk about the next year out. What is it that you want to see happen between now and next year, South by Southwest? On my big wish list, my big gigantic wish list um, would be a tier one pharma would decide to move into our region somewhere, San Antonio or Austin, somewhere around in this area. That would be my biggest wish list. We have a, this, the number two diagnostic company in the world that's you know, got their U.S. headquarters here in Austin. Mm -hmm. We have large, large medical device companies that have their GNA functions here in Austin. We have a lot of small pharmaceutical companies. I think the gap that I'd love to see filled next would be a tier one pharmaceutical company having a site nearby somewhere. Okay, so that's just for, you know, for, for startup for startups being able to collaborate, right? right okay. It's also for, for patient care because that's where lots of clinical trials get started. Um, with regard to helping startups in the life sciences, what I would love to see is the development of some wet laboratory space to help those companies stay and get their prototype development done actually here 
in Central Texas versus having to go outside to do that sure. work. And uh, is there a movement locally, local with real estate professionals, developers? I mean, are you seeing people start to think think along those lines? Yeah, there is. There's um, there's something that Kurt Watson is kind of heading up right now called the Innovation Zone, um, and and there's lots of conversations that are happening. I don't think anything's on in you know on paper or anything at this point, but I think the Innovation Zone could be quite helpful, and and probably wet laboratory space might be incorporated into that. I'm hopeful for that to happen because I really think that. It's a stumbling block for, for companies that if we don't have that space, it's always going to be very tough for life science companies to develop here without that oh, of type course. of space. They have to have a place to tool around and, and, exactly. and, and do science, right? Exactly. Yeah, so great. I think go big or go home. You know, Austin, <laughs> it's like we've got the med school, we've got a great new teaching hospital, let's get some wet laboratory space to kind of fill that whole piece out. and and then we'll have everything we need for life sciences. Yeah, when is, I don't even know when the last time you you had the opportunity to build a medical school from scratch and say, I've you know, heard it was about 40 years ago, yeah. so. And you can, all the institutional sort of legacies and the idea of we've always done it this way doesn't necessarily have to apply. That's and, right. You know, and that's, that's a right. great time to say, get your wish list in and say, all right, I need, these are what I need for my life science companies, you know? Exactly. Excellent. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs>